नमस्कार संचालनालय पुरातत्व अभिलेखागार एवं संग्रहालय मध्य प्रदेश शासन भोपाल द्वारा आयोजित इस वेब श्रृंखला में जुड़े हुए सभी अतिथियों का स्वागत है हार्दिक अभिनंदन है आज के हमारे ये ग्यारहवें व्याख्यान में हमारे बीच में जुड़ी हुई हैं डॉक्टर मीनाक्षी दुबे पाठक जी आज उनका व्याख्यान है मैं सर्वप्रथम मीनाक्षी जी के जो काम किए गए हैं उनके द्वारा जो सच वर्क किया गया उस पर संक्षिप्त में प्रकाश डालूंगा उसके बाद उनसे निवेदन करूंगा कि वो अपना व्याख्यान प्रस्तुत करें डॉक्टर मीनाक्षी इज वन ऑफ द फाइनेस्ट रॉक आर्ट रिसर्चर करेंटली इन्वॉल्व विद रिसर्च प्रोजेक्ट्स ऑन सेंट्रल इंडियन रॉक आर्ट एंड एथेनिक कल्चर्स सी डिवोटेड नियरली थर्टी ईयर्स टू द डिस्कवरी स्टडी पब्लिकेशन एग्जीबिशन वर्कशॉप एंड प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ इंडियन रॉक आर्ट She discovered dozens of new rock art sites, mostly in Pachmari area of Madhya Pradesh. She also discovered and documented rock art sites in Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, and Ladakh. She is an international expert member for rock art with ICOMOS and UNESCO. She is also member of Madrasa Foundation Advisory Board, England, and Rock Art Network, Getty Foundation, USA. She published four books and more than seventy research papers in national and international journals. She delivered several lectures on Indian rock art and tribal art in various national and international universities and museums. She has visited more than forty painted caves in Europe and many more rock art sites in other countries. She is awarded with high honor of Chevalier des Art et Lettres and. Pedimonials de la Bros by French government in 2014 and 2019 respectively her film central indian rock art and tribal art is screened and awarded in international archaeology film festival at neon switzerland in 2019 ab main dr minakshi ji se nivedan karunga ki wo apna vyakhyan prastut kare thank you thank you very much uh, good uh, good afternoon everyone and first of all i would like to thanks uh, commissioner archaeology for inviting me to talk about uh, rock art and particularly today i'm talking about the rock art of pachmari or satpura tiger reserve as you all know recently the satpura tiger reserve is uh, uh, announced for uh, it comes under tentative list of uh, unesco and sooner or later it's going to be declared as a world heritage site so we all know satpura satpura tiger reserve well known uh, reserve area and beautiful things wildlife and rock art we have plenty of rock art sites and this satpura hills are full of uh, rock art sites and uh, and it's uh, very well known for its uh, beauty and surroundings so as we you, as we all know central india is the richest zone of prehistoric rock art in india maximum rock art sites are situated in the satpura vindhya and kaimur hills these hills are formed of sandstones which weather relatively faster to form rocks and caves they are located in the dense forests and were ecologically ideal for occupation by the early people they were used for habitation in the stone age and even in the later age and periods this i am talking about particularly for the public and i prepared my presentation according to that, that people should know more about our heritage and culture so the satpura mountains have kept their original prehistoric rock art forms preserving a lot are enclosed by hills has preserved the rock art in its folds for over 1000 years Pachmari rock art sites are located in a fabulous natural environment. In fact, the landscape in which more than 60 rock art sites are situated are truly magnificent and exceptional from several point of view. 
the denwa river and its tributary banganga along which the rockart sites was created band their way through an extraordinary original landscape of innumerable close steep hills and cliff that for the most parts are wooded and rich for flora and fauna you can see here the beautiful stag and here a bison the pachi area well pachmadi it was discovered by captain j forsyth as a sanatorium forsyth was there in 1862 to explore this portion of the satpura forest here he built a forest lodge and named it as bison lodge his famous book the central highlands of uh, the highlands of central india depicts the beauties of satpura range when he came to pachmadi the area was of by the jagirdar of pachmari the local inhabitants korkus but there were traces of much older civilizations also so now you see all these uh, beautiful surroundings and mountains of vasatpura tiger reserve area the mountain may have had a sacred role because landscape counts the landscape is very important there can be no doubt that early people who made the art must have had a strong feelings of awe about those mountains and cliffs and that is why they chose them and consistently climbed them as high as they could in their images with all their faith and beliefs this is unique the site instill a sense of spiritual satisfaction a majority of the painted shelters we saw are close to running water and their choice might have been in relation to it sometimes they are near a big stream like kanji ghat tapka pani on the bank of banganga river but most often they will be in the vicinity of waterfalls like velkhandar sites rajat prapat butki bunda lapsara bihar mahadev or of running water this uh, famous uh, waterfall is known as rajat prapat then these uh, hills are known as nishangarh the pachmari hills are situated in the geographical center of the indian subcontinent in the state of madhya pradesh these hills forms one of the most beautiful parts of the satpura range the shelters are found all over the hills and the surrounding forests in the foothills and river banks many shelters are covered with paintings made over centuries by the early inhabitants depicting a wide range of subjects expressed by them in a variety of styles and left as great heritage for us to understand them and appreciate their unique efforts that originality and natural beauty are in themselves sufficient to qualify those natural surroundings of the rock art because they have played a part in the choice of the area by the early people the vertical white cliffs wearing the art are particularly impressive and spectacular for all who see them but rock art sites have been discovered by g r hunter g r hunter brought the painted rock shelters of pachmari hills to the notice of d h gordon in 1938 d h gordon was a, he was an army officer he was posted in pachmari in that time and g r hunter uh, he was an archaeologist and he was posted in nagpur university so hunter had excavated some sites here in 1932 and again in 34 and 35 the 30 in 1935 excavation reveal that the cultural sequence within this region commenced during the pithic period relatively few years to pachmari are aware that in the vicinity of the plateau exist a large number of cave shelters of great archaeological interest containing as they do number of rock paintings executed by the local uh, adivasis or tribes who lived in them at, at some distance past though the existence of these paintings has been known for many recently that they have received the attention that they actually deserve so dr g r hunter has explored a number of rock shelters with art in the vicinity of pachmari in 32 to 38 
he conducted a small scale excavation financed by himself and with the permission of government in three the monte rosa is known as astachal and dorothy deep is drop the khad in which a large number of microliths and other human artifacts were found skeletal material comprising most of the bones of small children and in one case a jaw of an adult male was obtained by him in two of these shelters but being eaten by white ants and having suffered from disintegration no useful information could be gathered from this this particular shelter is astachal shelter you can see there are some images well so the the hills are thickly vegetated with rich floristic and faunal biota but quite widespread and difficult to access sometimes the natural species is represented in the rock are of great economical importance having food value for the shelter dwellers and often from subject of their painting rock paintings found within shelters here are the major source of our understanding of how their creators related to their physical biological and cultural environments these people as do their descendants at the present time held beliefs and practices which express a direct or indirect relationship between their environment and them within the body of expression evolution of art from with the development of mankind centuries art as such plays an important role and this particular shelter is known as dodal pani shelter it's in the uh, madhai churna area you can see some rock art sites are here right so the location of pachmadi from the ecological point of view is such that it meets the basic needs of human being to survive with food form of animals and vegetables water and shelter the natural sources of water are numerous and perennial too hills have the shelters which are as large as to accommodate 200 to 300 people and provide protection against wind sun and rain many of the shelters contain large number of paintings in varying states of preservation they are placed at varying angles on the rock faces of an overlapping other paintings and varying sizes from few centimeters to several meters this is a astachal hill astachal area this is known as astachal hill and shelters are here one shelter is here one is here and you can see the close up of the shelter all right so before getting into in detail about pachmari i would like to say little bit about these my adivasi when i started doing my phd under national fellowship i was hardly 22 and believe me in 30 32 years back the pachmari was very different what we see today it was not like that and working doing research in pachmadi area it was uh, quite a bit adventurous to me and these tribal korku and gons they really helped me i'm so thankful to them without them it was not possible for me to explore so many new rock art sites in pachmadi hills so my heartfelt tribute to my this team because as amru baba is no more and i'm really thankful to them and and i am equally thankful to forest department because they were always always behind me the forest foresters were always with me and i always had a big support from them all right now most of the rock shelters have been painted with varieties of themes from early mid to recent time isolated rocks and cliffs faces have occasionally been chosen for making paintings but in most cases there is an overhang to protect them in fact any rocks with an overhang from small ones or meters across to long huge cliffs could have been chosen to paint in you see it's a very big huge rock shelter it is known as belkandar uh, shelter and in belkandar mountain we have we have many painted shelters are there in the very big mountain on all around the mountains uh, paintings are there well 
as to the art itself we may point out two of its main originality the first one would be the complexity of that art with the high variety of the animals represented 28 different species and of the action carried out by the numerous humans the second is characteristics of pachmadi rock art is at is only to be found there and in none of other indian rock shelters so far we don't know maybe in future maybe we find in several places warriors are represented carrying beauty number variety these are the main characteristics of pachmari rock cut here you can see the early early period uh, stack it's a huge one and uh, is what it being hunted you can see the big arrow is here and this side also the hunter is hunting both the side two hunters are there and they belong to mesolithic time here you see the superimposed these are these arches from different period late phase and this one is early mesolithic time all right so at pachmari we have noticed many pictograph means paintings but very few petroglyphs also at rajat prapat some motifs are engraved and filled with color not only in rajat prapat i have found some engravings in bhurburi lane also here you see they made some uh, circle and uh, some zigzag patterns human they engraved and then they filled it with color okay now we'll discuss little bit about style the styles of paintings range from naturalistic to very symbolic or abstract three main styles of execution are recorded the oldest drawings are more naturalistic or realistic and elegant and the later ones are more representational drawings are outline monochromic bichromic and without light and shades nearly all drawings of animals are shown in profile and in motion outlines of animal forms are generally realistic and the bodies are decorated with geometric patterns for example you can see this one this is this shelter is also from belkhandar hills you see the big uh, so and you can see it's a very realistic uh, drawing and the whole body is very well decorated with intricate patterns similarly here a big fish and his uh, and its body is also decorated <coughs> and next to it you see lot of hunter human but and not in a naturalistic way they are very much symbolic they are they, they are just like a stick uh, stick like figures and they have got big head gears and holding bows and arrows but they are not killing them they are, they have been shown just like that it means these defied animals and these animals has are related with some of their cult and rituals we'll discuss it later another thing this is also from belkhandar hills here you see a huge peacock you can see this peacock is a beautifully done very well drawing and his body is uh, designed with many intricate patterns here you see the big sign full of intricate patterns here there is another uh, boar and his body is also with design and some late face painting so there but unfortunately this this uh, art is not in a very good condition i enhance i enhance it quite a bit so you will be able to see it and you see the people are not killing it no hunting is going on so what was the purpose why the people draw such a beautiful drawing on the bare surface that time they didn't have a good color no brush nothing still they were able to make such a beautiful pattern because this peacock these designs are question of their faith and belief and these things are related with their religion with the culture another example you see this big uh, elephant this is from chuna and it's not inside the shelter it is outside on top of the wall outside wall i have noticed two big elephants of course they are not in a very good definition because they are facing direct sun and wind erosion but this one it goes to early mesolithic time and you can see the drawing is also little different from this elephant this elephant is late period elephant you can see to this compared to this one well 
the mesolithic people were decorating their bodies with ornaments they wore necklaces bracelets bangles pendants elbow bands knee bands and anklets men wore long loose hair and women braids they used sticks slings spears bows and arrow straps for hunting their arrows and spears were barbed with microliths these people used many kind of masks headdresses and animal hides the masks were different in shapes and were used in hunting and dancing headdresses were crowned with feathers antlers and horns so you can see here all these things we can see uh, with these people see this uh, the single line stick figures are male and this rectangular images are women and you see they are they are having some kind of headdresses and here you see some feathers have been there and here in this next one you see these women they have got very elaborated headgear the huge size headgears they are putting it and not only that if you watch it carefully you can see on their elbow bands knee bands everything is there they are very well decorated i mean they know they have evolved making things out of whatever in is was available in the nature another one here you see this is amazing packing on this man and it's a, it's a, it's again mesolithic art and here you see these stick like figure they are holding bow and and his body is uh, decorated body is filled with some patterns so you see we have plenty of mesolithic art in pachmadi because of god and gordon published many articles and he said pachmadi has got only late historic historic period paintings there is nothing early phase but it's not true when i was working there i did and still i'm working there whenever i get chance i go to pachmadi explore some sites and lot of mesolithic stuff is there early mesolithic is also there the paintings of pachmari area may be classified broadly in five groups firstly depicting scenes of hunters and food gatherers secondly pottery makers and cultivators and thirdly fighters and horse riders with metallic weapons first is considered prehistoric second proto historic third historic fourth will be medieval and the last is recent art because pachmari hills pachmari valley i mean this is the place where rock art tradition is still going on i will discuss about it and some crude paintings you can we will find here they are they belong to so recent time okay you see here the huge size a uh, wild boar it is depicted on a big size of wall and sorry in neemghan in the satpura tiger reserve in there is a one village and inside pareva pahadi shelter and i found it in, uh, in 87 i found this but it was not in a very good condition and another boar you can see very well designed from each other boar from uh, khari lane shelter then you see here this is a porcupine and hunter uh, it is also mesolithic phase and here you see he is holding big uh, arrows with tipped and here you see a big doe probably it's pregnant and another big fish with dots and nobody is hunting it they are just depicted for some this it means they are also having some kind of a story or another uh, mesolithic phase late mesolithic one can say yes see there many stick like figures they are uh, uh, shooting arrows and things but the lower part is badly damaged by arrogant people you see here it's a very big sambhar but his head is not very clear now but uh, you can make out there is a, it's, it's a big animal you can see the size of the animal is quite big this is from dropdi khad now dropdi khad the sites uh, was uh, talked by hunter and god and half of the sites are in a very bad shape it's difficult to enhance those art and they are not in a good condition some of them are already vanished even 
another uh, engraving engraved and filled with color from this and here also you can see some drawings here you see just uh, men without head and without body just you can see uh, lower this middle part and hands and it's holding uh, arrow or something is early face big uh, stag and from jambudeep and these archers are superimposed on it here again you see this figure is also superimposed on mesolithic phase here you see stag tree and panther or, or tiger is it's probably panther attacking or whatever you see the scene is very nice fish you see a huge size fish very well decorated but it's in a very bad condition i try to enhance it but it's it's not in a good condition that you can see and there are some small fish also another very interesting depiction i don't know if we have in other places also because i have not seen this particular figure is a woman and she is holding a big arrows with nice tipped and bow and you can see her big tummy she is a pregnant archer so it's it's a very good perhaps they wanted to show it they made it that women contribution of women also and they were equally active in that prehistoric society and another one you see it's a kind of shaman this man has got a mask and uh, here headgear and you see this long uh, this um, stick and bows holding and many small thing the strings are there and that these strings looks very much like skulls so we really don't know but we have many stories about human sacrifice in early time so we really don't know maybe they had it's it is related what some kind of stories because this has got tail also and it's a very long figure up here you can see and these uh, uh, archers and warriors are late phase they are superimposed on top of this figure this is from maradeo in maradeo there are many small shelters all around that area and uh, gordon talked about it they have made not a lot of in 86 now after 20 years i went i didn't find anything it's all gone but you see i tried to enhance it but his head is missing but i can see little bit up in here these are the rectangular figures of humans and it's a very typical style in pachmadi we have seen here also you see this these uh, rectangular figures are superimposed by this man but after the stretching you can see here some of them the stretch is a very good software to enhance the rock art and i am using it because we are not supposed to touch rock art not to put water on it just go and take picture that's it and after that you come home you can work on with the special software to enhance the art here you see bison and buffaloes nicely because still we have many bisons in pachmadi here you see the small deer but it something is in side is has it's a fetus uh another many animals you can see uh, superimposed wall from uh, belkhanda one shelter and here you see there are yellow color then white and many things you see ah uh, this another interesting scene from uh, rajit prapat shelter fishing you see this nicely done fish and these two men are going to hunt with bow and arrow here you see the fish fish are inside the trap trap and perhaps it's a trap which made with bamboo or something because uh, the local tribe is still they use kind of traps to collect fish here you see the mother dancing with her babies you know in pachmadi pachmadi is known for varieties of subjects there are plenty of subjects here you see this man is holding ax an ax here bow and arrow fine is going what about this man his head is missing arms are missing and his feet both feet are in in same direction so 
I came to know because I'm working, I'm visiting Pachmadi from my childhood and I keep on going there and I saw that I have collected a lot of testimonies from very old people, old generation, some of them are no more now. So they told, they told me this kind of figures, they thought they are ghost or they are not a good soul. And when you go to jungle, if they come and create problem to you, they have kind of faith. And you see the same things we have seen in rock paintings also. A nice uh, honey collection scene. You is climbing, going to collect honey and bees are, they've shown dots, bees. And here this tiger is coming and this man is facing it. So it's a rare scene where people are fighting or killing tiger. Here you see these langurs are enjoying playing. Yeah, this one is very interesting. And this kind of this scene is related with the story also. You see, there is a very big honeycomb and many bees. You can see this man is sitting and he's holding something to dry, derive away those bees. Here, this man is standing and holding a pot. And these dashes show some liquid is there, perhaps honey, because the scene is that. Here you see the big honey. OK. Here, this uh, figure this is sitting and playing harp. It's a string instrument harp. Here, this figure is standing without arms. This figure is sitting without head. So I, I came to know through some testimonies that whenever still when these local native people when they go to collect honey because the tradition is still going on in Pachmai there are still we have plenty of honey combs and honey collection is they do so before collecting honey before putting fire to drive away bees what they do they organize a little ceremony under the the tree or wherever those uh, combs are hanging they they said first they appease all living wing in, in the forest in particularly that area because they believe these people these uh, because these uh, honeycombs trees everything is guarded by some good or bad souls so they would like to make them happy, make them satisfied, so they shouldn't get any problem while collecting honey or while cutting, while collecting fruits, whatever. So perhaps this scene is related with it. We, because this is very close to their stories. Now, Pachmani is see what all is there. This is superimposed into carnivorous. Here is small, perhaps goats are going. A lizard is there. A row of ants are there. Ants are very important in the tribal community. I'm not sure about uh, now in Korkus. I don't know whether they still they are using it or not. But otherwise, it's a very good medicine for cold, cough, and fever. It's still in Bastar area when I was working in that area. I came to know, I saw in the market they were selling those uh, red ants. And I asked them, they said they will crush it. They'll make chutney. They put some green coriander and all, and they will eat it. It's a very good medicine for cold, cough, and fever. So maybe they wanted to show the importance of ants, and ants are here. Then you see this beautiful elephant and some patterns made with dots. It's a very different style. And here you see a hair. Another scene, uh, the superimposed scene from Bori area. Here you see these uh, cows and calves are, and there is a uh, river and calves are this side. And this you see the pregnant cow. Here, these people are worshipping this uh, cross. You see many bison bulls here. You see these three small hunters are hunting this mighty bull. Another and more here. Here they showed this body also. They're trying to show the ribs or like thing here. This man is going holding a stick. 
So like this, this is another buffalo. You see more bisons. And this one is interesting. You see this one. And this one is urinating. You can see this. So same when I was working, I came to know through an old gone man. And this year I came to know he's no more. He told me that after Diwali, they had they do some festival for their animals. And that day they collect cow urine, they mix it with water and they sprinkle it on all their house to purify their house with cow's urine. So who knows it is related with that. Now you see lion, we have lion also in Pachmari. Then following this big tigress. Yeah, this another scene is very unique and I have not seen uh, in uh, other places this kind of scene. You see, it's a man eater tiger. You see, this tiger has started eating this man. Uh, just one leg is missing. Whole man is, you can see. Here, you see, this just, you can see, just one leg is left. The whole man is eaten by this man eater tiger. Here, you can see another tiger and this. So this, this is again related with their story, their ritual. What I came to know, normally they don't kill tiger. Local all, Gon, Korku, Baga, Muria, they all worship tiger. They have different names, Magandeo, Baga, Baba, Dev, Baga, Sur, many names they said for tiger. And every village, they have one small tiger sanctuaries outside of their house. They, and tiger is like a huge al almighty for them and they are feared, out of fear, they worship it. So when somebody is killed by tiger, it's a big catastrophe on them. I mean, they want to do a big ceremony now. When they come to know, okay, this man is uh, killed by tiger, then they will organize a big ceremony and uh, then only they, uh, I mean, they feel that man is out of that trouble. But anyway, it's a very big research and I have already published paper about it. So you see the man eater tiger. Here again, you see tigers, the big tiger and cub following. And here this uh, rider, horse riders, these warriors are going and they are attacking on them. Another tiger is superimposed on our Mesolithic art. More tigers, this. Uh, figure is riding a tiger. This man is here without arms. So he, this is a sub, uh, guard. They are guarding. And this tiger and these things are also related with the stories. There are plenty of stories. And uh, I have done a topic on tigers. And that paper is in print. So we'll discuss this later. OK, you can see the another here very elongated body and it is got yeah sorry for the interruption because of its uh, lot of wind is here so i will go fast and i'll conclude it so you see little more mythological scene and dancing scene here here you see this, these people are uh, running away from bees. And it's a nice uh, birds. This woman is sitting next to peacocks and eagle. And uh, another peacock is here. Some mythical animals are here. You can see this man is riding a big animal, which is it looks like a composite feature. We are not sure about it. Here you see this man is fighting with this big serpent. Here, these uh, figures are uh, donning uh, crocodile mask and hide and uh, dancing music, celebrating. This is a very big scene from Rajat Prapat. Here, you see these people are holding head, headhunters, and many things are here. And Pachmari is known for this. You see Pachmari rock art. And we have seen these headhunters in five 
four shelters and all these humans are holding behind head and in a same direct and there was watching in same direction holding head in a same hand some more scenes from there are these uh, domestic scene these women is sitting inside the hut here same domestic scenes very much a village scene you can see here and they are sitting inside cattle and green vets everything is there and this one is from nishangar here also you see many warriors here this tiger is attacking to those riders many archers many varieties are here then you see these peacocks and warriors in this is from churna this but this is another unique scene from pachmari you can see this man lion man perhaps it is known as viala also and this man is fighting with this warrior holding shield and in between these two you can see this one is already behead here and his arms are also got cut and you see this uh, it's a very uh, different scene and it's of course it's a medieval time and this pachuna shelter you can see this huge shelter and that particular viala scene is here and another viala scene is here and you see the close up of it and you see the vandalism and that particular big huge scene is badly vandalized you can see the lower part i don't know why people vandalize sites another important thing in pachmari this site is from another village go, known as goduli and you see there are many shelt, uh, figures and this is a very active site sacred site this site is still worshiped by the local korkus and you see we have found lot of uh, deposits uh, under this rock here you see coconut shells camphor packet incense sticks and i came to know that during full moon night or during festivals these tribes they come here they worship this art and somebody came from new delhi sharma and he wrote his name on top of the shelter yeah as i told you in pachmari the rock art is still alive is still people are worshiping it this woman i interviewed her nearly 15 20 years back that time she was pretty old and she only told me that she used to go with her parents to worship those sites they used to do mantra there if they have any problem they used to go to those rock uh, rocket sites they do mantra after fulfilling their wish they again they used to go they sacrifice animals they make sometimes they offer that blood they put dots and you kind of thing they used to do it and here you see there's recent art recent uh, hand print and some designs on top of the early paintings now the condition of pachmari rock in some area not all see this is the kajri area where uh, people nearly damaged whole wall is full of their names you see some paintings on top of the paintings they made name so i'm really requesting everybody please come forward to save rock art do not damage it is here you see somebody from bethul he wrote his name and uh, they use charcoal to destroy the art same here you see fish crab beautiful uh, drawing but it was uh, graphic you see the graffiti on top of it see the wall is full of graffitis the similar thing here but now the important thing in 2000 i had did a big project for environment and planning for the doc documentation on pachmari hill rock art sites and under that project i suggested to the forest department if we can protect some rock art sites and uh, and forest department took initiative and they have protected 10 rock art sites inside the satpura tiger reserve area because not only because of human even sometimes those animals they also during rains they like to stay inside the shelter and then they rub their body so the lower part of the shelter normally the paintings from the lower part paintings are get vanished because of frequent rubbing so now after uh, protecting sites 
they are well and without disturbing archaeological ground everything is as it is only the grill have been kept to protect the rock cut now we'll uh, see a little bit that how this uh, traditions are still continue among the ethnic group you see this village is from this is uh, from rori ghat and these you can see these decorated walls and here these two korku women they are painting during diwali these similar cross we have seen in the rockhart site also so you see the tradition is still continue and this one is very interesting the various forms of their ancient traditions seemingly inspired the rock art in the vicinity of the villages their faith belief and customs are equally important you see these are these are known as patia uh, it's a kind of ceremony it's a memorial boards after when somebody died in korku's family within the 10 years it is compulsory to place to make these patias and they have to place under the tree and then that time they do a big ceremony and that ceremony conducted by the shaman and they do sacrifice animal and dance music everything there and you see the designs on it these designs are very close to the rock art see the uh, riders dancer many things and this is the place a big uh, tree mango tree under the mango tree you can see plenty numerous uh, boards and grave boards are there and so you see what is my point is this uh, all these drawings this carved boards are not a part of decoration it's not a art for them it's it is a kind of religion for them the similar thing rock art is also a kind of religion for them and for the early people similar you see here they are uh, they just brought this colorful this uh, patia with they covered with turmeric and now they will perform ceremony here and these korkus are dancing enjoying celebrating festival they are coming from far village coming to pachmadi to perform their ceremony so i'll conclude here pachmadi and the surrounding mahadev hills make a rich center of the painting it is interesting to note that the rock surface was not prepared by any way before painting and often uneven surfaces and corners were chosen for paintings while broad and even surface where you may accept exist existence of paintings are left unpainted the painted shelters are often located at considerable heights and access to them is difficult there are many shelters which cannot be used for dwellings are painted rather better than those seem to be suitable for dwelling purpose some of the shelters have numerous figures painted and several superimpositions of figures have been found and on the other hand some shelter contain a very few figures the majority of the paintings are red and white showing up admirably on the rock surface a few paintings are also in yellow color these colors are obtained by grinding pieces of rock found locally and mixing the powder with water on some other binder noodles of hematite were used for red and limestone for carole for white it is believed that plucked out, out sticks were used as brushes and coco pine quills for doing the fine work so thank you very much and please save rock art do not damage rock art it's our duty to save our culture and heritage thank you very much uh, thank you madam hamare beech mein kuch log jude hue hain main unse puchna chahunga savita ji reddy sahab kuch koi prashn puchna chahe koi madam se koi charcha karna chahe reddy sahab meri awaaz aa rahi hai डॉक्टर बी एम रेड्डी साहब गुड मैं भी पूरा सुन नहीं पाया हूँ बिकॉज ऑफ कनेक्टिविटी और इसीलिए प्रेजेंटेशन आई नो मीनाक्षी जी वेरी वेल सो इट इज ए वेरी गुड प्रेजेंटेशन आई कुड से दैट दैट मच ओनली थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू थैंक यू डॉक्टर रेड्डी थैंक यू तो मैडम बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद हम सभी जो भी हमारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं उन सभी का आभार व्यक्त करते हैं विशेषकर डॉक्टर मीनाक्षी दुबे पाठक मैडम का 
कि उन्होंने हमारे इस कार्यक्रम में अपना अमूल्य समय दिया और बहुत अच्छा प्रेजेंटेशन जो हमारे लिए काफी प्रेरणा स्रोत है कि हमारे यहाँ की टीम भी रॉक पेंटिंग के ऊपर काम कर रही है मैडम से हमेशा हम मार्गदर्शन हमारी टीम के सदस्यों को बोलेंगे कि वो मैडम से मार्गदर्शन लेते रहें धन्यवाद थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच